Hi guys, Paul here from Real Dog Training and making another video. So, I haven't been making much videos lately, kind of been um, having, keeping things a little bit quietly lately. It's been a crazy year and um, just needed to, needed to um, take it a bit easier for a, a month or so. But kind of getting back into it again now. Still been um, obviously making the blueprint and running boot camps and doing one on one, but just been. Uh, minimizing other tasks for a while but um i had a really good question come up on actually on through vimeo um there's a good comment section there on the blueprint page and um one guy's asked the question about uh using his deer dog and training a, his, a deer dog through the blueprint um so you know an, an indicating dog that stays nice and close and walks in front and just takes us to deer um about using that on birds um pheasants upland birds um pheasants and quail and things he's in this guy's in new zealand um and also rabbits and hares and it's a really interesting subject this because <clears throat> uh you know there can be a bit of confusion around it some people say you can't have a good deer dog that's a good bird dog as well and you can't have one that excels at both um, and other guys say you can and uh, there, there can be a lot of debate around it um, so I think it's an interesting discussion and was, I sort of want to identify a few key points on this and where people get confused and um, there's a lot of different point, points of view and no one's really wrong um, but it's just important to realize all these different important points. So um, I guess <clears throat> the, the, the first point would be um, there's, there's two different types of deer dogs. So the Europeans, um, you know, talk about the, you know, they have the versatile dog, the German short hair pointer and the wire head pointer, um, the Vizsla. Um, Vichlor, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, did you know a group of Vichlor are actually called a Vichlac? There's a nice fact for you. I just call them Vizslers. Um, so you've got your, your German... I'll, I'll talk about the, the German pointers um, to start off with. Um, so they call them fur and feather dogs, versatile dogs. But I think it's important to realise how the Europeans really, what they really bred their dogs for and their main intended uses for the dog. So the Europeans don't really use their pointers or their, their versatile dogs. They are versatile. They do a bit of all sorts um, for indicating deer the way we do in New Zealand. Um, they really don't. Uh, when they're talking versatile fur and feather, they're talking a dog that ranges out and points birds. And for that, they want a dog that casts side to side and quarters and works its ground very thoroughly um, and, and ranges, you know, like covers ground. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more soon. Um, but on, and they're talking fur, you're talking maybe retrieving. Um, rabbits and hares if you're shooting them but on big game on deer the the main purpose um how europeans use the you know the um, big game indicator well not even a big game indicating dog what i refer to as a big game indicating dog uh, they only really use them after the shot following deer up after the shot and a lot of that is um on a leash with the dog pulling hard on the leash and the guys, the, the handler's getting towed around by the dog on the leash. If they can't catch up with it like that, they release the dog and the dog goes out on its own and either barks on the dead deer, if the deer's dead, bails it or pu actually pulls it down. Um, and this is what they were really focusing on when breeding those breeds. So the German short head pointer and the white head pointer, um, they bred them to be have range and independence and be hard enough 
to go out and drag a stag down or bale a boar or hold a boar and, and wounded animals and stuff like that and have their independence to run out and hunt on their own. Um, and when it comes to birds, if you look at the way Europeans want to use their pointing dogs, uh, they a lot of their hunting is very different to ours in New Zealand. Um, they a lot more open country and a lot of their birds are a lot tighter sitting than ours. So um, they, they, they want to hunt in an open area and they want their dog to cast right out, even up to 100 metres or more, and really just quarter, run backwards and forwards, zigzagging, quartering, they call it quartering, just cut, when you turn, the dog turns with you and just, just covers the ground like crazy. Um, they want the dog running hard, um, and when it finds a bird at a distance, it locks up and points it, and then you walk over to the dog, flush the bird and shoot it. Um, and that works incredibly well for them because that when you're hunting in really large open areas um, with tight sitting birds, it makes no sense to have a dog walking right in front of you, um, walking around like that, and you have to go everywhere the dog goes because it's just wasting time. Um, and the the way they hunt, you know, they don't really use indicating dogs um on big game um the way we do in new zealand it's just a completely different thing um they don't walk around with the dog in front with the dog winding deer and sneaking in so they can shoot them um in fact this yeah they're, they're just not into that at all um and like i said they want their dog to the versatile to be able to run out and bail or drag down deer, um, bark on dead animals and stuff like that. Um, in New Zealand, it, it's very different, you know, and the way they hunt, they do a lot of still hunting, sitting there uh, waiting for deer to come to them, hunting a lot of open country and things like that. So uh, a lot of tree stand hunting, hunting in hides. Um, an indicating dog has no place in that type of, uh, hunting um, and it's more just tracking them up if they do wound it that's the that's what use a dog has to them uh, when you're talking about hunting deer um, here in New Zealand the whole thing um, is generally completely different I grew up hunting pheasants um, along the western foothills of the Kaimai so I grew up um, on a dairy farm there that backed right up to the Kaimais and our grandparents' farm was next door and we knew the neighbours on the other side and I just had thousands of acres of farmland that backed right up to the Kaimais, a lot of broken country with, you know, blackberry and scrub and scrubby gullies and stuff. Of course, not heaps of pheasants, but there were a few there. Um, and they were spooky, man. You, you couldn't have a dog ranging out you you didn't want a dog more than 10 or 15 meters away or well, because the pheasants wouldn't sit tight um so you had to keep your dog in you had to stalk quietly if, if birds knew you were coming saw or heard you coming they'd just run or fly away um so you had to i had to keep the dog in i really wanted the dog working it around at about 10 meters um and it was proper stalking and snap shooting birds you know and that's just you had to walk uh, everywhere with the dog and that's that's the way i hunted and then um you know in a lot of new zealand bush still hunting isn't really that effective either mainly because of the the way the country is and the way our hills are shaped and the way our wind works if you're just sitting still in a place the wind's moving backwards and forwards and just screwing you up so um if you're sitting still and a deer is slowly moving towards you from any direction sooner or later the wind's going to shift and it's going to smell you so you're quite often just sit there for buddy you know in a place where deer frequent all the time but you can sit there all day and they'll never turn up because you're there um, so hence bush stalking and using a dog and moving and continuously moving and finding the dog going to the deer you know um, so and, and the other thing um, 
as soon as you're doing that and you're hunting like that with the dog in front and you need the dog to be 100% steady on deer and you don't want the dog to chase deer in that, then all of a sudden you don't want to be sending your dog out after wounded deer either or it's just teaching them to chase. Um, and more often than not, you know, like in, in Europe and that the hunting and, and, you know, a lot of the country's really nice. Like do a search on YouTube and watch hunting in Europe and it's, quite often open broken farmland and nice open timberlands and um, game parks and estates and things like that. So um, when they release a dog, it's just sort of running through open trees and out through another field and next thing there's a dead deer laying in the next field, you know, but, um, and that's all right. And now they run tracking collars on them and all that type of thing. But um, in New Zealand, in your average situation in the bush, if you send a dog out after a wounded deer, um, and it hits it and spooks it and starts chasing it, your dog can end up, I mean, 800 metres away or 1,000 metres away or even further, and that's a bloody long way in New Zealand bush. Um, and with the nature of our country and that, dogs chasing deer, it just is not the go, you know. It, 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 sometimes it works, and in, with certain types of dogs and certain types of country, it can work really well. Um, but nine times out of ten for the average person training it that wants a good indicating dog, Chasing deer, sending a dog out after wounded deer is just a huge no-no. So these are the huge differences that you've got to understand and, and the way the Europeans hunt birds and the way most Kiwis want to hunt birds and the way the Europeans use their dogs on deer and the way we use and want to use our dogs on deer. You know, it's two completely different things. So, um, I mean, we have people in New Zealand that hunt open country with good pointing um, bird indicating dogs and they want their dogs to range and quarter properly um, and that's cool but you have to know what you want to do yourself and work that out and identify that um, and if you are getting advice from other people you need to know which camp they're from too um, it's the thing with advice, you'll get advice, you know, I work with a lot of people that have got advice from different people, like people saying, your deer dog needs a really good heel, and then we can't, te it's a pain in the ass getting that dog to walk out in front, because they've spent the first six months of the dog's life teaching it to walk beside them. Um, that's just an example of how one person's advice, they say you need a deer dog walking beside you, so that's what they focus on, but why do you need it walking beside you? Why, and again here in this case, why can you not have a bird and a deer dog that's good at both? Um, I would agree if you spend a huge amount of time with a young dog raising it up, teaching it to move hard and range and quarter and work the way the Europeans would want their bird dogs to work and you go try to go straight from that and step into the bush here in New Zealand and hunt the way most guys want to hunt over their deer dog, it's not going to work. It's a shambles. Um, vice versa, if a guy in Europe tried to take one of my deer dogs that I've spent the whole first half of its life teaching it to walk nice and close and slow in front and keep an eye on me and tried to go and hunt birds with it, they'd think it was the biggest um, piece of crap ever because it would just walk quietly in front of them and they'd be disgusted. Because um, they like their dogs to run hard and range and cast side to side. So um, where does that leave you? Um, basically, with the deer dog training blueprint, it's a specific, specialised deer indicating dog training system. And it's designed, and it will, if you follow it properly, and the dog I'm training, um, that we're filming and I'm training in the blueprint, um, already is walking nice and close in front, and slowly in front, and when you give a nice quiet command, and you'll stop, you go, and you'll go again, you go, he'll turn with you, and it's all within a few metres, and he's, he's already, he's only six months old, he's just starting to learn to look back and stay close on his own. Um... The way I used to hunt pheasants here in New Zealand in the foothills of the Kaimais, having a Labrador or a Juma Shorty Pointer or a Vizsla set up hunting like that would be great. Um, 
I would, you can do it either way. I would either spend all my time early on setting my dog up nice and close, walking really close like the deer dog blueprint, and I would go out and shoot a few deer over it. And then I would also start to go out and shoot some birds and pheasants over it. And I would very carefully start giving it a little bit more leeway on the birds. And the dog will naturally, a dog, good, nice, confident dog, when you give it that that little bit of leeway, that little bit of freedom, will start wanting to push out a bit more and hunt a bit harder and start quartering and moving a little bit more on the birds and it'll learn to do that and then you just put a bit more pressure on it um, every time you're hunting deer and you'll slowly create and mold a dog that will stay nice and slow and close when you're hunting deer and it'll range out and just have that little bit more movement and be a bit more relaxed when you're hunting birds but I'm only talking five or six meters hunting deer you know your dog will work within five or six meters and then on birds you might be able to let it range out and quarter 10 or 15 meters something like that um, and in my experience most guys in New Zealand don't really want their bird dog ranging much more than sort of halfway out to the shotgun range really only about 10 or 15 meters um, so you know if a, if a bird gets up at 10 meters it's at 20 meters within a couple of seconds and, and you've got to be into it if, if your dog's working right out to the max of your shotgun range and it's putting birds up there, well, they only have to fly for a second and a half and they're outside of your shotgun range. So really, with real spooky birds, and for me anyway, um, I want my dog working well within shotgun range. So, so my dog's putting those birds up well within shotgun range and I have plenty of time to get up and shoot them. Um, yeah, so, so that's the answer really. Um, if you want... A nice, close hunting, well controlled bird dog. Everything in the deer dog blueprint lends itself very nicely to that. Um, and me personally, uh, for a bird dog, um, the, the way I want to hunt over it in New Zealand, keeping it in within about 10 or 15 meters, um, snap shooting pheasants like that retrieving ducks I would ba I will basically be doing or well, I will be doing the exact same thing I'm doing in the deer dog blueprint and throwing retriever training on top of that and there's my bird dog and that's it um, if you want to hunt open country tight sitting birds real specialized thing um, covering tons of ground ranging right out to 40 or 50 meters or whatever you want to do the deer dog training blueprint's not for you um yeah so that's it um video is way too long again and i'm just rambling um but that's the way they're turning out so that's it and i'm going to start trying to make more of these again from now on cheers